be sure to check out my friend Mason's shop at nomadautoimports.com. He's also on Instagram and Facebook as Nomad Auto Imports. Support him, check out his site, see if there's anything you're interested in. Hey guys, Yoda Code 43 here today with another tour and drive for you. Today I have the chance to check out this 1991 Nissan Skyline GTR. First we'll do a little walk around, get a good look at all the exterior features on the car. I'll tell you a little bit about it. And we'll check out the interior under the hood and we'll go for a drive. This one is just standard gloss black paint, non-metallic. This particular car has 152,000 kilometers on it. It is a Japanese domestic market vehicle imported from Japan by Nomad Auto Imports here in Flint, Michigan. This is what the auction would consider a grade three car. Definitely driver quality. It's in very nice shape, it presents pretty well. And just so you know, I have the hood popped so that it's easier to take a look under for looking at the engine a bit later. So this is the R32 generation Skyline, which ran from uh, 1989 through 1994. This particular one has, like I say, it's a GTR model, so it has a 2.6 liter twin cam inline six with two turbos. So the RB26 DETT engine. It is quote unquote rated at 276 horsepower per the Japanese uh, gentleman's agreement. 260 pound foot of torque. 0 to 60 in about 5.1 seconds, as this one is an all-wheel drive model. It's rear-wheel drive biased. The engine is longitudinal, runs from front to back. And supposedly they run a quarter mile in about 13.7 seconds in stock form. Very strong for its time. Big things to denote the GTR from like a, a lower model GTST would be the badge on the back here, GTR. The tall two post wing on top of the trunk. This one is a two door coupe. You don't get, there's no such thing as a GTR sedan. Um, most of the cars also had rear window wipers. I don't know why American cars didn't get that. Any American cars, I'm not just talking specific to Skylines because we didn't get those here, but such a great idea. GTRs also have their own uh, sporty seats on the inside with a little more bolstering. It's five-speed manual. You also got this GT badge on the side. 16-inch wheels with dual piston calipers up front and single piston in the rear. These gunmetal gray wheels. And then I believe it's only GTRs that got, may have been GTSs as well, that got these projector headlights as well. And then you have this deep chin spoiler and a larger opening in the front bumper for the intercooler for the turbocharger. I thought another interesting little thing I found on this car were these wiper blades, these Pia branded wiper blades that have like a carbon fiber texture to them, and then they have uh, an arrow wing to help keep them pushed down to the windshield better. I don't recall off the top of my head if these cars were speed limited, but if they were, it should have been somewhere around 155 miles an hour, which is nuts, even by today's standards. So 
So this is the RB26 DETT. You can see there are two intake filters. There are two mass airflow sensors to deal with. You have semi-adjustable suspension on these cars too, at least on the shock absorbers. Nissan twin cam 24 valve twin turbo. And then I always find it interesting how small the batteries are in these Japanese cars. This would have been a standard sized battery for it. Otherwise things are relatively accessible under the hood. I mean, you've got your brake fluid back there, the battery I showed you up front, your power distribution box. And it's pretty clean under the hood in here too. This looks like power steering pump right underneath the cam sensor here. And your coolant is right here up front. Looks like this one has some aftermarket horns in it as well. And your whole ABS unit is back here opposite the, uh, the brake master. Just give you a good overview of the quality of the paint on this car. Like I say, it's a good driver quality car. It's in pretty nice shape. It shines up real nice. Just dusted it off with a quick detailer before filming this. You can see good luster in the paint here in the back. There's a small little dent here in the rear quarter panel that be easily taken care of. All right, so now we'll check out the inside. Nothing too special about the door panels. They got some storage down at the bottom. You have your window control up here and your door handle here, and speakers on the bottom of the door. Active speaker system, interesting. Must be like the upper level because this is your top trim model. And these are like the factory uh, floor mats that would have gone in here. They have skyline embroidered right into them, nice. Feels a little bit like a third generation Camaro with this bump in the floor, but I'm guessing that's for the transfer case for the four wheel drive system. Good sized glove box, nothing special there. Dash is all one piece of rubber all the way across. Some minor bubbling going on here, but nothing major. And then GTRs also have some extra gauges in the middle here for the driver to focus on. You have state of the battery charge, you have oil temperature, and you have turbocharger boost. Which you can't actually see. There you go. This one has an aftermarket stereo in it, which probably has Japanese radio bands on it, so you wouldn't be able to use it with American stations. Easily changed out, though. And then automatic climate control on this car as well. Digital, I'm guessing, so you have your cool down, rise, raise temperature, fan speed, etc. And like I say, this one's a five-speed manual transmission. You have a little ashtray here. Handbrake right next to the driver. Small center console for storage. And that's about it. Uh, you have a clock down here low on the dash to the left side of the driver. You have your wiper controls and this very interesting combo switch on the side of the gauge pod. You can change your uh, radio mode and your, well, you can change your stations right here on the pod as well. You've got your hazard switch there. Feels kind of uh, Fox body or Chevy Beretta-ish in the way it's set up. Over here you have your rear defrost, your front fog lights, and then your headlight control on the roller switch on the bottom there. It also says GTR in the steering wheel. Like I said, 152,000 kilometers on this car. Other gauges you have are, oh, front torque percentage, or front, front differential torque is the top left gauge over here. Fuel level, and then you have oil pressure and water temp. 
7,500 RPM soft red line, and it looks like 8,000 hard red line. And I think that there is a radar detector, or it may be a turbo timer, but I'll have to find out. Easy access to the back seats, actually. You just push down the little tab on the back and you slide right forward. Again, the embroidered skyline mat in the back that goes all the way across. Some tight bucket seats in the back. It's just two position, meant for two people only. And then it's got these very interesting pod speakers up on the rear deck, which are Carrozzeria branded. And the seats themselves are actually kind of a blue-gray color. They're gray in the middle, but kind of a bluish on the rest of the body of the seat, whereas the rest of the interior is black and gray. Simple dome light and reading lights, and uh, you can grab handles up top, and visors are nothing special. You have a vanity mirror, at least in the passenger side. But yeah, other than that, we're going to Check out the lights here real quick, and then we'll go for a drive. So let's turn those lights on. The gauges light up with a white background, including the auxiliary gauges over here. lights. Had to add one more note as well. This one actually has some cool aftermarket pedals in it. But also, you have your gas door release by pushing down. Right back there, it's released. And to release the trunk, you pull up. <laughs> Nothing special about in the gas door. trunk is pretty plain Jane, kind of shallow because there's a rear differential under there for the four-wheel drive, which I learned today that to fill the reservoir of fluid for the rear uh, axle, there's actually a panel hiding right behind here. There's a uh, fluid reservoir that feeds into that. And this car also has, I didn't mention before, a system called HICAS, H-I-C-A-S, which is the um, electromechanical rear steering system on these cars. Uh, it can turn a couple of degrees either way at low or high speeds to help with parking lot maneuverability and high speed stability on the road. And then the all-wheel drive system on these is called ATESA, A-T-T-E-S-A. That we'll go for a drive. I like the seat belt guide. That's a nice little touch. Okay. Good enough for rock and roll. ever driving Skyline. This one's a little less peppy than the first one I drove, but that's okay. It's still pretty cool. Living the American Gran Turismo dreams. <laughs> a little bit. So, 
This one's a pretty nice example. Temperature's good. Just gotta get used to the clutch. Quiet, yeah. It has some sort of aftermarket exhaust on it, but it's pretty quiet. This is a relatively stock exam. Yeah. I mean, it's got the pod filters, um, the aftermarket exhaust, but you know, it's stock injectors, you know, stock computer. Um, oh, so. I wondered about that. Is that a radar detector or a turbo timer? It's an old school turbo timer. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Oil pressure is good. We're delivering zero torque to the front wheels, obviously. So we're just cruising. Really, really direct on center steering. I'm like drifting in the lane, but that's just because that's how it is. It's right there. Very much a driver's car. Oh, yeah. Cut off some of the wind. Oh, automatic up and down window. Nice. Like if I wanted to. Oh, well. We'll see if that'll still be yellow by the time I get there. <laughs> Maybe I'll try and lay into it a bit, but vitals are good. Still got plenty of fuel. It didn't drop any further. Oil temperature hasn't really come up that much yet, though. Boost gauge is working. And we're showing lots of lots of volts. Vital is steady at about 1050. Odometers, tripometers working just fine. Set off a car alarm. This thing's quiet. It's very quiet. There's a policeman behind it. Like I said, it's a relatively stock car. Problem with right hand drive. <laughs> you can't see people coming on when you're trying to turn left. Am I? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I told you it's a relatively stock exam for car. It is. I commented on that too. Got some interest from a local kid who's taking a picture of the car. He's learning about the dealership right now. Nomad Auto Imports right here in Flint, Michigan. Attracting attention. Dumb, don't go near City Hall. Got it. City Hall's fine. Just don't go past City Hall trying to, you know, lay into it. Don't go ham. I'm sure I'll get a message from Ted this week. Probably get a fucking Look at a blazer. <laughs> it's got Corvette taillights yeah. in it. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a bad approach angle you got going on here. Yeah. I'll, I'll cut it over. There we go. We're good. I'm just going to be that guy. Actually, pretty tight turning radius in here. Yeah. Very comfortable cars to drive. 
I don't disagree. It rides really nice for a sporty car. On coilovers, too. Yeah. Oh, so it is aftermarket. Okay, I wasn't sure if yeah, it was stock. It's, it's an aftermarket coilover setup. So I commented that it had adjustable uh, rebound on it. Yes. Yeah. But they're, they're very comfortable for, for being uh, aftermarket suspension. Any idea whose they are? No. They got orange tops on them, as much as I can tell you. <laughs> Right. Oh, they're proud of their parts. <laughs> like our 270. 270 has an HKS. Oh, okay. The gear shift is pretty easy. It's just getting used to doing it with your left hand. Okay, we have oil temp now. I'm sure that's my doing. <laughs> I mean, that was like almost full 75 hundo. But a 26 should go all the way to 8K, right? 75 is just like the soft limiter or the soft red line. Oh man, that sun. It's like 85 degrees outside, it's hot. I noted about the, uh, the electronic automatic cooling uh, HVAC system. 18 should feel pretty nice. Oh yeah, that's cold AC coming out. Yeah, the AC works on it. Very nice. It is a working AC car. Common question we get. Got good idle oil pressure when the car is warm, showing about 1.8 bar. Which is, uh, God, what's that? 25 PSI? Something like that. That's pretty good. So weird to see a car where a tachometer goes all the way to 10K. Other than a K car. Well, right. Yeah, the Honda Beat from a few weeks ago was uh, an 8,500 RPM red line and an 11,000 RPM speedometer. <laughs> that was nuts. Cappuccinos are about the same, aren't they? They show like 10K on the, or 11K on the speedo? I'm um, in the tackle. So. Find out. Sometime. I haven't looked at one in a while. We do have another one that uh, will be coming up to our shop soon, so you'll be able to check that one out. Sweet. All right, guy, make your move. Oh my goodness, take your time, why don't you? <laughs> oh man. Yep, that gets to the hustle real quick. I don't know, I think the gearing is better than people give it credit for. It's a little higher than some cars, like my little VR6 swap Jetta is probably about the same as this car is now for 5th gear RPM and speed. At 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers, we're showing about 2200. Actually, the Jetta's might even be worse than that, it might be almost 2500 at 50. It's short. This is a very, very livable car. I mean, I've got plenty of space, and I'm 5'10", but I got the legs of a taller person. I don't fit in most cars the same way other people my height do. Now, this is Moorish, okay, so I'm going to go another. Now, we'll see if these people turn. Or... i still got nice cold air coming out of this side vent over here. It's real, real nice on the leg. I like the sound. I like that it's quiet and subdued. It's kind of nice. It's a very stock example vehicle. Yes. Not common with these nowadays. No. Finding one of these in stock form is kind of like trying to find an S13 or a Fox Buddy Mustang in stock form. It just doesn't, or a Civic. It just doesn't exist. They don't have to stop. Okay. Aha. Idle changes because the AC compressor kicked on. Another little one. Well, you know what? We'll do it from the stop this time. It's all farmland out here. Oh, shit. I'm going to pull over for a second.
Not bad for my fourth time driving right-hand drive total. Not bad. No, I guess it's the fifth if you count the POW. Fourth time driving stick shift from the right-hand side. Not bad. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd believe that 5.1 to 60 if I could launch it perfectly, but I'm not about to do that to this car. I'm not... I, I mean, heck, I've... I've never owned an all-wheel drive manual car, so that's me just learning how to do it right there. This is an easy car to drive. It's not a very heavy clutch. The steering is very sharp and on center, and the car tracks beautifully down the road. Yes, yeah, this, this is a nice example. This one's listed on Nomad Auto Imports for on their website for 36,900 right now. 152,000 kilometers. Drives, I mean it drives nice. It drives very well. Even for that kind of mileage coming from Japan, that's actually relatively high. And visibility out of this thing's really good too. For being a coupe with decent C, C pillar size, it's it's easy. It's like seeing out of a yeah. Most 80s coupes are like this, I guess. I hear just the turbo whoosh from those pod filters, and it's wonderful. How's my driving? Not bad? Oh, it's good. How am I getting better at not drifting towards the center yeah, line? <laughs> I noticed. Yeah. yeah it's, you auto correct pretty quickly. It's not natural to me, that's all. Yeah, it takes time to get used to. Again, as soon as, like, when I daily one. Same thing. You just get used to it. Right. Yeah, because when I was dailying the beast back, you just get used to it. Yeah, I'm sure if I spent anything more than a half an hour or an hour with this car, I'd have it pretty well down. Yeah, yeah, probably. I'll probably drive this home today. <laughs> It's a sol this is a solid driver considering it hasn't actually moved in nine months. Yeah. Well, no, no. No, it moved uh, two months ago. Oh, okay. No, two weeks ago. Well, you did say you took pictures. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying my videos. Like, comment, subscribe, and suggest other ones you want to see on the channel. Hopefully I got more interesting Japanese imports to come in the coming weeks and uh, otherwise we'll see you guys next time